Welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, New York City, we have Doug Elinoff. He's a partner at Elinoff, Grossman and Scholl. We're going to talk about SPACs and how they are an attractive vehicle to raise capital. Doug, it's great to have you back with us at market site. And let's just give our viewers a quick review of what a SPAC is. Certainly. Uh, thank you for having me back. I appreciate it. Uh, a SPAC is a registered IPO that raises money that sits in a trust account that is created and formed by private equity sponsors and uh, well-known business people. And that money that sits in the trust account while it's a public company is used to buy a private company, thereby taking the private company public through a reverse merger of sorts. And it's just a, either a financing technique, an M&A transaction to get a private company public. It enables retail investors and public investors to participate in private equity transactions, single purpose private equity transactions, sponsored some, by some of the best known private equity professionals in the country. And that's uh, it, it, what a SPAC is in essence. If I remember correctly, Twitter was in a SPAC before it went public, or some, I know some of the technology companies fall under uh, a SPAC before going public. Well, your, your competitor exchange actually was right. a reverse merger, but not by a SPAC. Mm -hmm. uh, there are, in the last 15 years, even though the program's been around for 25 years, mm -hmm. in the last 15 years, uh, s several hundred companies have gone public through SPACs. Right. It's just an alternative way of going public. The IPO market in this country has been reduced since I was a young professional from a thousand mm -hmm. a year down to a couple hundred. This is a way for other private companies to get liquidity through a, a SPAC acquisition, uh, and uh, it's become a very legitimate program over the last 25 years. Yeah, it's really interesting because I've seen um, it's been, I've read more about SPACs recently and addressing some reputational concerns. What are some of them, and why are they attractive now to, to raise capital? Well, I really appreciate you asking about the, the reputational issues. Right. That's old news. It's more than a decade old. And originally, SPACs were 10 to $25 million public offerings. And they took public much smaller private companies that were really micro, micro cap companies. And consequently, uh, they didn't get in a lot of liquidity and research coverage. And not that they were bad transactions at all. They were actually quite legitimate. But regulators had their concerns. They, regulators are always concerned about blind pool offerings. And it didn't attract the major underwriters, law firms, accounting firms, and the largest private equity folks in the world until the last 10 years. And as the program's gone through its maturity curve, up from the smaller deals, now the average SPAC size is pushing $300 million. Mm -hmm. And the uh, enterprise value of the private companies that they're taking public are often over a billion dollars, these are much more substantial transactions. They get much more due diligence done by them, by the private equity professionals, the law firms, the accounting firms. And so it's a lot of the credibility by association of the professionals, as well as the sponsors and the target companies themselves that has led the program uh, to have a certain amount of respectability and cachet even now that it didn't have when it was a smaller program. All right, and you'll be discussing this at a conference that's coming up in New York City on Thursday. Yes, uh, the Deal Flow Events Conference here, not uh, uh, too far away at Cr uh, Crown Plaza, mm -hmm. uh, is on Thursday, and there will be several hundred people there in attendance to learn about SPACs and SPAC acquisitions and uh, meet the people who uh, participate in the industry. All right, now let's get your IPO and M&A outlook for 2020. Well, IPOs continue to be very select and rare. They tend to be the unicorns in the country or other very select uh, industry groups that underwriters have targeted as being attractive for that year, which is why we like SPACs, which is an M&A and an IPO kind of rolled up in one, because the sponsors of those SPACs have very varied professional experience, whether it's industrial, TMT as in technology, media and telecom, uh, healthcare, energy is a big uh, area of SPACs. And so many more uh, varieties of companies access the public markets through SPAC acquisitions than they do actually by IPOs. But by all accounts so far, this year, uh, lines up to be as strong as last year. Our pipeline is full. Uh, as I said last year at the conference, if we were down 20% in 
in 2019 versus 2018, I'd still be a happy camper, and it was up 30%. So I can still be down another 20%, and uh, I think professionals and capital service providers are still going to be enjoying uh, a good market. All right, and you think prime targets are technology and healthcare? Uh, well, last year, because I just did the analysis, analysis for the conference, uh, TMT, technology, was 13 of the 57 SPACs that were underwritten last year, uh, followed by consumer. Uh, and then, believe it or not, we actually have five cannabis, it's not really cannabis mm -hmm. SPACs, they're CBD and hemp, uh, to be clear. And that raised uh, uh, almost a billion dollars for the, those particular verticals. All right, now any update to wrap up here on any prevalent deals, any of the terms there? Uh, well, the IPO terms are relatively similar to what they have been in the past. If you are the best known uh, private equity sponsors that have gotten the best returns for your limited partners, your uh, structure will probably be one share and a third of a warrant as the pricing mechanism for the SPAC IPO. Uh, if you're a little well known but still very credible, it's a half a warrant. And then if you are not as well known and you're not a serial SPAC professional, maybe you'll, it'll be as much as one share and one warrant. And there's nothing disreputable. You're just entering the market for the first time and investors make those distinctions. All right, Doug, great to see you as always. Thanks for stopping Jill, by thank Market you. Site. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.